there, I'm Allie, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have another mystery box challenge. This time, the theme is Dollar Tree. Try not to peek again and see what I got to start with. Hey, I'm reading here, it's a placemat. I've never done a Dollar Tree placemat DIY. I've seen lots of people do them, so this will be an interesting challenge. A canvas, it is an eight by 10, which is a perfect size for a project. Okay, found my first required item, and it's these Surefresh mini, I can't read, Surefresh reusable mini containers and lids. These are actually really helpful. I feel like I need these like in my pantry, but I have to craft with them. A microfiber, cleaning cloth from the automotive aisle. Just a couple things coming out of here. Oh, okay. My next required item are these clothes pins. Next, one of these cute wood trays. I love these trays at Dollar Tree. A very helpful item next is the natural jute cord. Any Dollar Tree crafter, really any crafter DIYer knows how essential this specific jute cord is. Oh, this is so cute. This is a flower and garden tin, and I have never seen it in this shape. I've only ever seen like the oblong ones. We have Dollar Tree acrylic paint. I have never used Dollar Tree paint before, so I'm gonna definitely use it in this video. Oh. Another really good useful thing is these wood craft cubes. My last required item is a pie pan. <laughs> so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time thinking about what I'm going to make, but lucky for you, there's the magic of editing. So let's hop over to my DIYs. First step, I thought I would tackle the hardest item first, which are these little tiny food storage containers. And the first thing I did was use some Dollar Tree sand to fill up four of them and then used hot glue just to hold the lid down. That way these don't pop open. Next, I'm going to stack these little containers, kind of alternating the direction that they go. So the ones with the sand basically are becoming the base of this project. And then I also stacked on a couple that didn't have any sand. I just figured it wasn't necessary since the bottoms would already be weighted down. This part is optional, but since I had some Dollar Tree caulk on hand, I decided to just fill in these crevices here where the bottoms met and where the lids met. I thought this would just give it a little bit of a stronger hold together and make the whole project look a little bit nicer in the end. Now you're probably wondering what exactly I am doing here. Well, I wanted to make two little pedestal stands. So using the craft cubes I was sent and then two of these wood squares, which are from Dollar Tree and I kind of pried from a project that was a fail and you never saw on this channel. And I decided to use these cubes to just add a little bit of texture and variety. So I glued them all the way around the perimeter of these squares. Now I will say that one pack of the cubes is not enough for both of the squares. I did have some of these in my stash that I had to use. So it took about one and a half-ish packs, but it looks really cool. Wait till you see the finished result. Once I had the cubes how I liked them, I stained them using my favorite early American stain off camera. Also off camera, I spray painted these stacks of containers black, and then I decided they just looked a little bit too shiny and just not very good. So I decided to mix up some black acrylic paint and baking soda just to add some texture. Once the base dried, I put a ton of hot glue on the bottom of this piece here and then glued it right onto the center bottom of the cubes. And I decided as a finishing touch to wrap some twine around the center here. You do see a little bit on the bottom, but just ignore that. I decided just one section of twine was all that this project needed. Now 
Now this video is part of a hop, of course, and if you want to see who I sent my box to, that is linked down in the description box and there is a $50 giveaway. And if you want a chance to win, all you have to do is leave a comment on my video and then comment on all four of the other videos that are part of this hop. If you want even more chances to win, this little mini hop here is part of a huge collab with a ton of amazing YouTubers. Each hop is giving away its own $50 prize and I'll have more information about how you can enter in the description box. Now let's move on to the next DIY. Next up, let's use this required pie pan and I'm gonna spray paint it black just as I did earlier with the other required item. While that's drying, I'm taking the placemat that I was sent and I'm using my little paper cutter here to cut down really, really small strips. I didn't measure because I didn't really care. I wanted it to be organic, but of course you could. And after I got the entire placemat cut down into strips, I then used a piece of scrap canvas, which you'll see me take apart in the next project and trace out the pie pan. This is simply because the hot glue does not stick to the surface of the pie pan. I needed to add something to add a little bit of texture. So I thought this canvas would work perfectly. And I used some E6000 glue and some Dollar Tree clamps to hold down this canvas on the lip of the pie pan until it dried. So here is the fun part. I wanted to do something kind of complicated and that is make a weaving on the bottom half of this. And I'm inspired by cane webbing, which I just absolutely love that trend. And I thought maybe I could kind of tackle some DIY cane webbing weaving. It wasn't exactly how cane webbing looks, but it was pretty close. So I started by gluing down all of the horizontal strips first and then began weaving in the vertical strips, just going under over each of the plastic pieces and then alternating the under over for the next strip, if that makes sense. I'm sure you've done weaving. I remember doing weaving projects in kindergarten and all through elementary school. So it's just very basic like that. Now here is the trickier part, and you see I already put two of the diagonal pieces in off camera, but I am going to then add in diagonal pieces in and out of the vertical and horizontal weaving, and it's the same process, just going diagonally, and I so I went over under each of the cross sections like so, but I did skip every other, I guess, X section like you see here, that way I would have that nice little gap in the middle, and then I just repeated that same process going the opposite direction with the weaving. And I feel like this is easier to see what I'm doing versus describe it, but I do hope this makes sense if you want to tackle this. And while this project looks complicated, I promise you this was really easy and I think it only took me about 30 to 45 minutes to complete the whole weaving. Just to lock everything into place, I used some hot glue to glue down all of the edges that are sticking out before going in with my scissors and trimming everything down. Then at the top here where the opening is, I glued down a strip on the inside of this little pie pan planter thing and then glued another strip on top. It just locks everything into place so your weaving doesn't fall apart. Next, it's on to painting it, and I wanted it to look like that cane webbing, so I mixed up this kind of taupey color here. I just grabbed a whole bunch of different paints until I got the color I wanted, and as I was doing this, I realized it being this color in a pie pan, it kind of looked like I was painting on pie crust, like raw pie dough. So in order to fix that, I dry brushed on with a bristle brush a little bit of a darker tan color, just to bring in a little bit of a wood grain kind of effect. After the paint dried in this little pocket that I created here, I added in some Dollar Tree florals that just look so good with this project. And I finished it out using some of this jute rope, which is not the Dollar Tree rope. I got this from the craft store so I could have a bigger roll of it. And I just put that right around the bottom edge here like so. And I put that around the bottom edge of the weaving. And then once I met the side there, I brought it up added some excess so this can be hung up on the wall and then brought the other end of the rope and glued it down and that completes this project. When 
I got these clothespins, I had no idea what I was going to do with them. And honestly, I had no idea where this project was going. I kind of just let it take me where it felt like it should go. So I took the canvas and I removed the canvas off of the frame. I'm just using the wood frame. As you saw a DIY ago, I then used part of the canvas for that project. Now the tray that I was sent, one of these sides was actually loose. And so I just broke that off and then just broke the whole tray apart so that I had all of the individual pieces. Next, I did want to try out the paint that I was sent, so I'm only using the white. I was also sent a red and blue, but I painted the entire canvas frame white. And then I also watered down some brown paint to kind of act as a faux stain for these little wood pieces that were the sides of the tray. Once all that paint had dried, I'm taking these little pieces here and then gluing them to the back of the canvas frame kind of spaced out so that there would be enough room in between each of the pieces. And since I had this little heart piece left over, I also decided to glue that down to the top of the canvas frame. And that's where the clothespins are coming in. I don't know if I was, should have used like all of the clothespins to count as this project, but I only used four and I glued them here to kind of make a little bit of maybe a photo display or I imagine this in the laundry room where you can clip up a missing sock and I think that's what I'm going to be doing with this project. As a finishing touch I'm using some of the jute twine I was sent to make a hanger and then also wrapped each of the corners with the twine because I felt like this needed a little more detail. And Lastly, I glued down one of these Dollar Tree wood cutout hearts, and here is the finished result. I felt like I had to do something with this microfiber towel, but I had no idea what to do. So after a little bit of thinking, I thought that this would make a really cute throw pillow and I didn't feel like breaking out the sewing machine so I'm just doing this as a no sew envelope pillow where I put some hot glue first halfway on the edges and then folded that over to about a little bit less than the midway point on the other end and then I repeated that same thing on the other end and folded it over to create the envelope fold. I turned the pillow right side out and then decided to add some little trims just to make this cuter. I had this little pom-pom trim left over for, from other projects that I glued down on the side. And then in the center, I also had this daisy lace trim that I glued in two little stripes down the center. And I think this turned out really cute. It looks really cute in my bedroom and I'm honestly kind of happy with how this project turned out. to leave a comment on my video and all the other videos in this hop if you want a chance to win that $50 prize. And if you're new here and enjoyed this video and this style of projects, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And that's all I have for you in this video. I'll see you on my next one. Bye!